Can you tell us about Be the Good Timekeeper? Norman's Timekeeper series really is a reflection of the world that he sees. You know, he started painting these. The figures, interestingly enough, at that stage already had, had masks, by the way. But oh, wow. And that was, yeah, that's something he introduced to refer to the fact that a lot of what we said can be toxic sometimes. We're talking a lot, but we're not actually saying that much. And, you know, there's a lot of things that you can read into that. Hello, my name is Shadow Twala and uh, I'd like to welcome you to Invictus Podcasts. My guest today is gallery owner Charles Bezaidenot. Hello Charles and welcome, thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. Um, as a gallery owner, what, what, what brought all that to, to, to the fore to, to be part of representing other people's artworks? Jung, I mean, if you're talking about my career as an art dealer, I don't know, these things happen by accident, I think. I think what happens is uh, <laughs> you, you kind of generate or, or gravitate towards, um, towards things that you are interested in. I mean, I actually studied law and um, then went traveling for years and when I came back, I eventually ended up helping a friend with an art gallery and that became my own gallery eventually called World Art. Yes. And World Art, I'll have you known, uh, know, um, I chose the name because I like world music. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> you know, I want to... I want to do the visual art version of, of, of world music, and that became world art. So, I mean, yeah, and then I started representing artists and doing art fairs and all that, and now it's 17, 16 years later. Um, so that's the, that's, the, that's the official or, or, or traditional art gallery part. But if you're asking me about the NFT part of it, I don't know if that's actually the answer you were looking for. Well, no, no I'm going there. I'm going there. But I, I just love the, the fact that it, 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 there's a lot of music inspiration. And of course, um, mm. that, that expression, it, it just gives me a sense of, of world art as, as a, a very uh, multicultural space. Uh, as far as yeah. the art and the artists are concerned, but now that you've gone to to NFT, how does it does it does it disrupt any of the work you do for your artists and and yourself, or is it going to make it easier? No, I'm sure it will make it easier. But I mean, you know, NFTs are relatively new. I mean, I only really first started reading about it January, February last year, about a year ago. And um, I just immediately, besides the fact that it's fascinating and interesting and exciting, I just thought, you know, here's an extra tool that one can use to, to, to promote your artists and to introduce your artists to a wider audience. So um, to me, it made perfect sense. I didn't even think about it. And I cannot believe that I'm so lucky to actually be operating the way that I do at a time where this new technology has become available and it's still only the beginning of it and I'm, you know, we're standing here and we're looking into the distance and there's this whole new world about to open in front of us and that to me is so exciting and there's no reason why I wouldn't want to be part of it. Charles, how does it affect the value as if somebody wanted to invest in the art uh, coming mm. to your space and and uh, work, finding the price? Because usually mm. I'm understanding exhibitions is the highest bidder, I guess, or almost like an auction, whereas uh, the NFT uh, is much more restrictive. Yeah, look, the NFTs generally are sold as on, a, uh, on an auction platform. But I mean, in general value, you know, the art game is a funny old game. I mean, how do you actually price a painting? Um, there are so, there's so much that's been written about, and I have my own way of doing this. And, you know, you look at certain elements, um, whether it's the artist's career trajectory, the recognition of their peers, supply demand, there's a million things that you look at to get to a price point that makes sense. And then it's all about managing that price and making sure that um, there's a certain level of consistency there. To me, that's almost the most important thing is consistency. So now enter NFTs, like we've sold an NFT by Norman O'Flynn last year in April. And um, 
it sold for ex roughly the same price that a painting that it was based on would sell at the gallery, which was about three and a half thousand dollars. Um, so the NFTs, I think, you know, uh, on the one hand, there's that level where you promote the artist with it and therefore, you know, more demand and therefore potentially a higher price. On the other hand, it's also a confirmation of something. If people are willing to pay X amount on another platform for something, then um, it just tells you that you're on the right, on the right track here. And um, yeah, yeah, I don't even want to start with the investment <laughs> side yet. But. No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear that, you know, um, Norman O'Flynn has already sold a painting from your, from your stable and, and, and that's a positive uh, move, the fact that also the price didn't quite change much. But for, for old investors or for old art lovers who want to touch and feel and see, do you mm. think they'll be challenged by the digital space where they cannot touch and feel or maybe even hang on their wall? NFTs are something different. And it appeals maybe to a different market and it has a different kind of value. If you want an artwork that hangs in your living room that you can interact in a certain way, in a certain way with, that opportunity is there. An NFT is not going to replace this. An NFT, I think, on one end, I mean, I look at my kids, they, they sort of 11, 12, 13, that age. <clears throat> They play TV games like um, Fortnite and whatever, and they're developing a whole different sort of appreciation of uh, a visual aesthetic. Um, and I think NFTs being digital art will probably kind of play into that taste. And maybe in the future, in the near future, that's, that's the type of art that, that, that this generation will, will, will be after. But for now, you know, I think an NFT is an extra thing. I mean, if you like Norman Flynn, for instance, and you look at his art, his paintings are fantastic. Um, and you can enjoy and interact with it on a certain level and in a certain way. But the NFT side of it, well, it offers other opportunities to actually enhance that experience. I mean, with the first one we sold, we added some moving elements to it, like... Part of his iconography is this, these bombs dropping, which is symbolic of the end is near and we need to be careful and, and time is running out kind of thing. Now, on a painting, that's static and it's part of the visual language there. But with the NFT, obviously, the opportunity was there for us to make that a moving element. And the bomb that keeps on, the bombs that drop, um, <laughs> just added a different level of experience or, or, or um, yeah, the way to enjoy it. So I think in that way, NFTs are hugely valuable and the potential is massive. So having, having the, all this works around you, um, what excited you most about the Africa, Out of Africa collection and how have you prepared? What are you putting into that collection? Yeah, no, I think this is a fantastic initiative. It's um, what excites me is the fact that on one level, I don't think that's necessarily even the uh, intention, but on one level, it, it, it promotes a group of artists. Um, it, 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 it introduces them to a whole new market that previously wouldn't necessarily have been uh, familiar with these artists. So that's a great thing. Um, then, of course, just embracing the technology and exploring the world of NFTs and all that, giving the, the, those of artists that opportunity is also obviously a huge plus. And then, yeah, for me personally, it's great. I mean, Norman O'Flynn is in the collection. He's an artist that I've been working with for quite a while now and Kilmany Joe Liversage as well, another one of our top performing artists. Um, so it's, it's, it's really great to see. And I think we're gonna. The audience will grow um, immensely because of this. Can you tell us about be the good timekeeper? Um, Norman's timekeeper series really is a reflection of the world that he sees. He always says, "I'm just observing the glitch." <laughs> so, so you know, he started painting these. I think it was in 2016, maybe 17. And um, the figures, interestingly enough, at that stage already, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the figures had, had masks. And so that had nothing to do with COVID, by the way. But oh, wow. and that was, yeah, that's something introduced to refer to the fact that a lot of what we said can be toxic sometimes or 
we're talking a lot, but we're not actually saying that much. And, you know, there's a lot of things that you can read into that. And then um, generally, yeah, you will see references to uh, 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 graphic novel iconography and so on. And that sort of leads towards how we as people, how we kind of almost replace traditional religious icons with more popular culture related icons and um, how that's becoming our religion and then to an extent another extension of this is we are becoming our own gods you know we glorify ourselves so much whether it's on um, um, um social, social media, media yes. or, yeah or just the way that maybe you know we i'm generalizing of course now but you know people don't really have the same sense of uh, spirituality or religion that they used to have. It's changing and obviously this is not a comment on whether it's right or wrong or whatever, it's just from Norman's point of view, this is what I see. So that's what he paints and that is what those timekeeper portraits are about. Well I think they're going to garner lots of conversation because this is a mm. global challenge what you talk about, you know, how, how we engage with social media, how we engage with our spirituality mm. and iconicism. Um, I, I, I think this is going to do very well. Have you have you bought an NFT yet? You know, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, I do, yes, I have. Um, but I, th I mean, the world of NFTs, I mean, right now when you're looking at the Board Apes Yacht Club, then you're looking at, you know, there are so many amazing projects around. Now, I'm way too late for the, for the, for the Board Apes, but um, I am actively looking at new projects. There's one I particularly like called Deadheads, um, and a few others. And the moment I see the right one, I'm, I'm ready. My, everything is set up. My wallets are there. Alles is there. Well, I'm about to get a wallet for this particular collection. So right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a newcomer uh, as a baby boomer. Right. But I think, you know, the, the NFT world is is and the nft lab is, is is specifically for a much younger generation and i'm hoping to get there which is very exciting shall mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us today and You're all the all welcome. the best thank with you. with your artists on on the collection Great. excellent thank you very much thank you Take care.